Shut up and sit down. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Third Shift. This is episode 204. I, of course, am your funky leader, the greatest man who's ever lived. I am your host for this episode, the host with the most. It's me. It's Matt. And over there, of course, it's the co-host with the mo-host, the light bearer, the light bringer, the light bear bringer, the beast master himself. It's Eric. <laughs> we're going to start off this episode. <laughs> That's not how we start oh, off this okay. episode. We're going to start off like we always do and ask Eric, how was your week, my friend? My week was glorious. What a great week. I'll tell you what, I've been playing this little game, if you didn't know, it's called Ghost of Tsushima. Okay, it's called, I think it's Tsushima, to be correct, but, you know, do I ever say anything correct? No, it doesn't matter. Anyway, fantastic game. I, uh, I got through Act 1 and into Act 2, mm-hmm. and, and, wow. You know, I already put a lot of hours into it, I've already gone insane with every side quest there could be, and I went... All right, you know, it's probably going to get more linear from here and more than just a boop, boop, boop. And I went, and I went, boop, boop, boop. And I went, oh, no. No, it didn't. Just, this is round two. Mm-hmm. Here we go. And then it said, hey, not only that, but we're just going to put some other stuff back in your round one area, too, just yeah. so you can kind of go back through one more time. And I'm like, perfect. Perfect. I, I am stoked. I will go kill more of these dang Mongols. Because ain't no mongol in getting over my wall. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? That's you right. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. <laughs> ain't no dirty mongol in getting over my shit wall. <laughs> uh, but there are no city walls. That's why they got in. That's true. That's, That's the why problem. they got in the first place. You're right. It's exactly the, the whole thing. So I'm loving it. And the best part is, is everything that ebb and flows in that game, like how I want my character to be. It's just so like neat to watch me transition to like different roles and play different things, and then I change my whole persona and, and colors and and gear wise to match it. Yeah. Like for a while, I was the super bow man, and I was like, oh, I'm in Tataruki's gear, whatever his name was, and I'm I'm busting up, I'm just archery and everything. And then I said, no, nah, bro, I'm going back to the white knight Ronin. So I put on Ronin gear. I found the white die master, and I put mm-hmm. on all the white die, and I had this beautiful, wonderful white, you know, ninja mask. And then I put on the giant straw hat, so you can't see my face. And then I had the really cool like sword that has the yin and yang and white and black on it. And I was mm-hmm. like, this is what I am. And then all I did was just Ronin style everything for a long time. And now I feel myself I'm like, oh no, now I want to be a dirty, nasty little meanie, little meanie pants. So I'm finding all the black and red and I'm like, all right, I'm going to go death and murder and ninja uh-huh. style now. It's great. It's a great game. <laughs> I'm having a good time with it. I always want to play it. I'm always like, yeah, yeah, let's go downstairs and get some game time in. Mm-hmm. So. That's the game I've been mostly playing. I also did a little bit of World of Warcraft. Uh, whenever the father-in-law's on, I usually pop in there. We do some rounds. We do some missions. Popping through there. It's just fun. Just casually just leveling up again. You know, there's no no rush. No big fuss going on. I don't care what's going on. I'm just having fun. I'm just leveling up. Going, all right. That was a good time. Did some dungeons with some randos. I don't care if we do great or do poorly. I just heal people. If we succeed, fantastic. If we don't, it ain't my fault. Doesn't matter to me. <laughs> oh, it's the best way to do things, I think. No stress, no pressure. Just having a good time and getting the heck off. So my gaming week's been great. Work week, pew, 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 you know, I don't know. what that, that place is a jungle. I don't care anymore. Uh-huh. I just wait through it until I get home. <laughs> and then in the home life, uh, my wife invited my niece over to help her with some learning stuff throughout the week. So it's been definitely a crazy week because, you know, it's a handful of children, etc. Yeah. So, but that's ending. She's uh, heading home after the movie night and then life will be getting back to normal. So yeah, that's been my week, man. What about you? I feel like it was a pretty good week, but then you mentioned work and I was like, oh man, this week totally sucked. And especially today sucked. Nobody's going to be able to see it, but I'm covered in ink everywhere. So you know it was a hard working day for old Uncle Matt for when that happens. But blah, work's dumb, whatever. Video game front, playing Animal Crossing New Horizons. Haven't got a chance to get into the latest summer update on that, but a new summer update dropped. That's always exciting, seeing the new stuff in there. Hanging out with my Islanders, doing my thing. Also been playing a little bit more of Paper Mario, the Origami King. That's one of those games I got to be in the right mood for it, though. Like, I want to sit on a couch with two Joy-Cons in my hand and play some Mario. And it's usually once or twice a week that I have that feeling. But I felt like that a little bit this week, so I got a little bit further in that. 
it's just it's just a fun, just happy time to play. I love finding all the little crumpled up toads that are all folded up and stuff because sometimes you have an idea that they're actually there. You see a little pixel wiggling about and sometimes you just, I just go around hitting stuff with my hammer and boop, hey, a toad popped out. Hey, how convenient that I attacked this poor guy and wailed on him with a hammer and then a toad popped out of his head. It's great. Seems legit. Yeah, it's just a fun <laughs> little thing. And then like you said, Ghost of Tsushima, I started off, well, I think we kind of talked about it during the last episode. I started off Wanting to be sneaky, but going samurai. Then I've upgraded my Tonto, which is your little assassination knife, to the absolute max. So I was super killing everybody. And then I found the longbow and actually started playing with it. And now I'm Archery Uh Jones. Because I love, you get that super long draw, and it takes you forever to get it fully extended and you shoot it. But then it's like you shot him with a cannonball. Dudes go flying. This is like ragdolling off the archery towers. Mm-hmm. It makes me laugh. It makes me smile every single time, especially when you do it like from ambush. Like dude's just sitting out there patrolling with his buddy, and then he goes, Funk! and just goes flying. <laughs> and the other guy's like, fly. oh, what's happening? As you're steadily oh, no, drawing no, 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 back no. another one. And thunk! <laughs> he goes flying off the cliff. It's great. I, I got into Act 2 as well, and I hadn't gone through and just like, totally smashed that first island with the side quests and everything. So when it went, hey, go back there too, I was like, this is the perfect excuse. I'm going to end my stream here, and I'm just going to go start doing every single side quest. I'm going to put on the traveler's gear and just go up and down, like a little little side-to-side path, all up and down the coastlines, and then steadily inward and inward and find more things, find more fox shrines, find more, follow more birdies, doing all the things. It's just a great game, having a lot of fun with it. And speaking of games and having fun, what's more fun than watching an awesome sports anime? Kuroko no Basuke, I finally finished it. The only thing I have left to watch is the movie. God, that show is so good. It's so over the top and ridiculous. And the storyline and the characters are so good, too. I won't spoil anything for anybody, but it's just... It has awesome character development. And characters you didn't like, in the very next episode, they get some cool technique or they work with the characters on the rival team that they're teammates with. And you're like, oh man, those guys are awesome. I hope the protagonists freaking lose to these guys because they're built up so well. And then the protagonist gets some other skill. And you're like, whoa, these guys are awesome too. I hope they beat those guys that I was just rooting for. Woo! And you go on this crazy roller coaster ride of emotions and everybody loves it and everybody has fun. It's basketball, man. It's great. It's an awesome sports anime. Now I don't know what to do with myself because it's over. And like I said, the only thing I have, only thing I have left to watch is the movie. So I'm like googling, like, what are the best sports animes? And this other one that's got like 190 episodes came up, and I was like, maybe that's the one. Maybe I'm gonna get hooked into this one next. It'll it'll sustain me for like two will. months instead of one mm-hmm. month. It'll be great. I hope it does go that way for you. You know, and, and it's so funny because you did it again. You you ended here with the anime thing, and then you and I immediately went, yeah. I watched them anime too, and mm-hmm. once again I watched that God of High School. Yep. And you know, an anime is good, real good, like primo good when you watch the episodes over again. Yeah. Because there's only yeah. three episodes, and I can't get enough of it, so I just re- and rewatched them again. And then just yesterday I went. I'm going to watch them again. So I watched them again. (laughs) It's so dang good. I love it so far. It's just, and it's so weird and just slightly different from all the other, a lot of the other anime shows I watch. And that's not to say they're not unique in their own way, but you know what I mean? This one just really is like, it's popping for me. So I'm in that same boat as you. I'm just like, "Mm," eating it up, loving it. Now I'm like, man, I'm kind of wanting to get into this genre of anime myself. You know Mm -hmm. See if there's any more of these, like, you know, the fighting karate kind or what I'm going for and getting that. Because typically I was always just looking for whatever the sci-fi or fantasy stuff was. And that was my jam. But I'm, my little wings are starting to unfoil just a touch. I'm like, maybe I can fly too, you know? Woo. Uh-huh. I actually did the same thing because I was like, I'm going to watch another sports anime. And I went, hmm, maybe I should, like, look into more sci-fi stuff. Because I used to watch the fantasy and sci-fi stuff all the time back in the day. I'm like, man, maybe I'll start looking at this. And then I'll, what about like these slice of life animes that are just like regular people, you know, having their actual like storylines and stuff. And I, was, I was scrolling through literally everything on Crunchyroll and I was like, that's too much. I can't do it. I got, I got to just, I got to just find one thing to just, and just lock into. Maybe I'll just start up, you know, an old favorite or something just so I, I can be like, all right, boom. And then now just spread out, do whatever I want, pick one here and there, do that kind of thing. One that's real fun. It's called Fire Force. Okay. They're, you know, obviously it's a group of firefighters, but it's got like a weird mythic touch to it. So, nice. and, you know, like magical crap going on. So it's not just firefighters because that's what I thought of it originally. And I was like, I ain't watching that show. I don't care about no firefighters, whatever. 
And then, I I don't know why, I must have been bored one day, and I finally watched an episode, and it was not anything like what I thought it was going to be. And instantly, it was like, this is the bomb. Oh, yeah, let's go. So maybe there, there's where you start. I literally wrote it down on the same sheet of paper where I wrote Necro Barista down from last <laughs> Necro week. Necro Barista, which is out right now, folks. You can play uh-huh. it. Got great reviews all over the place, too, so... Now, see, you just ruined my segue. I was going to say, speaking of games that are out right now, <laughs> but this one gets kind of weird and strange reviews because nobody understands what it is. I'm talking about Need a Packet, which is out as of the 24th of July for PS4 and the Nintendo Switch. It's also been out on PC for at least a year, I think, but it's a game I'd never even heard of. Developed and published by... Here's another part where it's mysterious. It's either developed and published by Marginal Act or Sometimes You or one or the other. I had got conflicting information from Nintendo themselves. Like the Google search result said, oh, developed and published by Sometimes You. And I clicked on the page and it said, developed and published by Magical Act. And I went, well, no, Marginal Act, sorry. I was like, what the <laughs> heck? What, what's going on here? And I was like, hmm. And I read the description. And now this, this, this is what's going to hook people into it. The description of the game is you play as a grocery store clerk or cashier who's going crazy. And she like she's literally going insane and imagines her her cash register as like this uh, medieval tower and there's dragons and all kinds of crazy things like attacking her and you got you got to figure out what you're doing. And I went, that sounds amazing. Boop 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 go on YouTube. Need a packet review, need a packet gameplay. And the game starts up. It's like, "Hey, welcome. It's me. I'm going to play Need a Packet." And you click start game and it says, "Need a packet?" And the answers are yes or no. And on some of them, it says yes, easy mode, no, normal mode. Literally every single person on YouTube who I've seen play this game picks yes for need a packet, and whether it says easy mode or not. And in that mode, you play as a grocery store clerk scanning stuff. And it's basically like Papers, Please, in that every every day you get kind of a new thing you got to watch out for. And now you're selling alcohol, so you got to card people and you know, check the birth dates and all that stuff. I'm like, okay, this is cool, and the music's really good, but there's all kinds of weird stuff in, like, in even the normal mode. Like, the characters, all the graphics are really ugly and strange. Like, all the people are, like, they're, like, shifty and hideous looking. And before you go into work, you ride the bus in, and you get, like, a little screen where you're looking at your phone. And so you look at stuff on the phone, like, you'll look at, like, a YouTube app and, you know, the news. And then as you're there in the grocery store, like, pieces of the YouTube app will be like up in the screen in the corner. So everybody who plays it is going like, what's going on with this? Why is, why is that guy there? What's happening? Like literally all you hear people going is what's going on. I don't get it. I don't understand this. And then they play it for like nine in game days. And then they get the to the end where it just says, Hey, you became the manager of the supermarket. And they go, oh, okay. I don't, I don't get it. Like there's more to something. It's, and it was really weird because even just watching watching it, the graphics are so ugly, and the it feels like it's something that's been translated from Russian, like with a Google Translate machine. Because like <laughs> the, the name of the game is Need a Packet, which is apparently like a plastic bag from the grocery store, but in the game it says Packet on the grocery bags, and you're like, hey, need a packet? Like, but it's not a packet; it's a bag. So like uh-huh. everything is just weird, and even in the normal mode, it's all off. And I'm like, I'm, I'm watching, I'm going, where is this, where's, where's the tower, where are the dragons, what's happening? But all the people on YouTube, literally every single person has not picked normal mode. When it says need a packet, they don't pick no. They pick easy instead of normal. You pick it on normal mode, all the graphics change even further. Everything's really unsettling. When you're riding the bus, like, there's the picture of your hand gripping the phone, kind of like uh-huh. in Persona 5, you know, you get your hand on the phone. Yeah. Like your fingers are all rotten and everything's like nightmarish in this mode. Like you see the little bus driving you to work and there's like lasers and fire and demons and stuff. And then when you go to work, everything is the whole interface is all unsettling. Everything's slowly becoming more real and more twisted at the same time. And then as you watch people play this, like it starts becoming one of the best parts of what remains of Edith Finch, where you're trying to do the job. Like you literally have to scan all the stuff, but now there's dragons flying in. There's little like pieces of the interface are coming alive and like chasing you. And you got a big health bar across the top and it's slowly ticking down your health bar. If you don't manage those and do the stuff so you can earn money to better yourself when you get home, it's a wild, crazy game. Even just watching the normal mode, I couldn't get enough of it because everything is so freaking weird. 
If you like weird stuff, I mean, this game is only like seven bucks on both platforms. If you want a weird experience and have a strange time, and then also understand it because you just listened to, to me talk about it and play it on normal mode and see stuff get even weirder. Like, oh, I can't, I don't even want to spoil stuff, but there's stuff in the, in the trailer. If you watch the trailer for this game, stuff gets really weird. Like the graphics totally start changing. Everything starts looking weird. And that's, it's, I, I don't know. I think I need a packet. Do you need a packet, Eric? I do need a packet. I used to, I used to give packets to customers all the time, man. I used to be a little bag boy doing my little grocery thing. I used to do all that. Yeah. And I used to think about dragons and slaughter and all sorts of things. Well, mm-hmm. I did exactly that. And I do think at some point maybe my hair fell out and other things happened to me as I did this. So <laughs> I feel like I've played this game. Just in real life. Yeah. <laughs> Just in real life. And I'm still alive. So I guess maybe I became the manager of the grocery store. Maybe I did it. Maybe, maybe so. I succeeded. I hope so. Or I'm in some strange alternate reality where I don't know what happened. Maybe this is the dream. You're still at Gorman's right now, but this is the dream. You you went on to (laughs) another place you hate to work. No, God. You're right. I'm going to escape from this place and get trapped in another nightmare. Oh, Oh my God. Speaking of nightmares, man. Well, my game this (laughs) week is a beautiful, beautiful little title in which the protagonist the main girl here she's scared and doesn't know what the heck's happening and she's searching for her mom i'm talking about fate tactics it's out on pc isn't out for any of the other systems sorry if you don't have a pc you're not playing this one right now it's developed by endless fluff games published by humble humble games it is currently ready to rock and roll for you it's a strategy rpg all right and it's got the think final fantasy tactics uh you know think in that kind of realm it's got those types of graphics when you're in the, the battle system. Mm-hmm. You'll go into these separate little areas, and then boom, you got the whole the real grid based area going on, but you got the different uh, things you got to look for. There'll be explosive barrels over here, magic shrines. There'll be obviously trees you can hide behind, rivers you got to get across and think about. All the normal stuff you'd you do if you're playing a strategy RPG, it's in this one. You play as Peone, a little young girl with her two companions. It's like a wolf and a birdie. And of course, you can do magic. Wow. That's amazing, right? Mm-hmm. Apparently not in this world. People no. apparently don't like human magicians. They call them witches. So they call her a witch. They don't like her. The fae and the humans are fighting each other. So, and if you don't know fae, fae's uh, fairy folk, you know, little folk with wings. Bzz, they fly around. Well, apparently they don't like humans very much. And nobody especially likes human witches. So she's kind of an outcast, but she's just trying to find her mom and find answers because she doesn't, hey, Classic strategy RPG. She doesn't really know what the hell's going on or why she's where she's at. Mm-hmm. Oh man, surprise, surprise, everybody. But the reason why the game caught my eye is because it's got that rich, beautiful, think Breath of, Breath of Fire 3. You know, the colors in there, how they were just popping. So beautiful. Same in this game. Everything just looks so rich and wonderful. It's got the 16 bit, you know, Super Nintendo graphics sort of thing, but it's all super clean and crisp instead of obviously what it was back then. Oh, it is really cool too because unlike tactics where it got really in depth with the, the magic system and then the job building and stuff, this one you along the way get summons. So there are these little extra folks that you bring into battle with you. They can level up, they can die, but they're there and they all have like their own little set of skills. So your only mission before every battle is once you see what you're fighting against, what you're doing, you just go into your summons and you go, Oh, well, this one's got a, a lot of fire and this is some water based people. Guess what? Hey, this is your typical elemental. You know, hey, what what counters fire? What counters earth? Da 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 da. Mm-hmm. So you pick your summons accordingly. And here's where the really cool part comes in that really got me going was instead of just having a ton of spells, which you do have, you know, magic and everything else, you get to carry in three cards which have spells of all different kinds on them. So it, one might boost your agility for the the whole game, the whole round or match or whatever. Some might uh, 10% off of all attack damage against you, or we'll cast Fireball three we're three turns in a row once activated, something like that. You get to pick three of these cards before each battle. And of course, like I told you, you get to see what, what you're fighting up against, where you're at, what your environment is. And then you pick your cards according to that, what you think you're going to need. And while you're playing, you get, of course, your move turn, your action turn, and then on top of all that, when you use your spell cards, they don't count as any turn. So you can pop them without any penalty whenever you feel that it's necessary or needed. 
And you don't see, I, well, at least in games I've played, I haven't seen something like that ever. It's usually all tied in to your characters, and then you have to actually use your turn to do said, uh, you know, said thing or whatever. But in this one, it just has that added little element. And then instead of having to, like, physically move everywhere, you could just, you just click and click and drop, click and drop. And your, your, your little character will run over there, do his attack. You don't gotta worry about, you know, the whole witch attack. No, they do their attack. They do all their stuff and rock and roll and go on and on and on. It's a real, it's kind of, I wouldn't say dumbed down, but it's a simpler strategy RPG. Yeah. But it's real streamlined. From what I watch played, it's real boom, 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 boom. You're moving your groove and it isn't, you're just sitting there for 30 minutes, rubbing your chin, trying to figure out what the hell's going on. You're, you're moving your pieces. You're going through the music was popping. But I feel I feel like nowadays I hate saying that anymore because I think music is pretty awesome in most games anymore. I, yeah. I just don't hear crappy music anymore. I really don't. I'm like, you know, I say music is great, but I say it about everything because like every damn game's got good music anymore. I mean, even if a weird if even a weird ass game like Need a Packet has awesome bumping music, every game has great music. Literally, exactly. It's it's insane. So if you're looking for a you know fifty sixty hour streamlined easier strategy rpg where you're a, a young lady looking for a mom and you're going through this mysterious of course fantasy land you got your little wolf and birdie companion hey look at that who doesn't love having animals as friends everybody loves animals as friends except for me so get out there and check out some fey tactics i see i was just gonna say this does sound not entirely right up my alley but i like the streamlined bit of it because I love strategy RPGs. I always have. But when I think about them, I'm like, man, I need to finish off Disgaea or Phantom Brave. And those are those strategy uh-huh. RPGs you can get so deep, deep, deep into. Deep, 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 deep. Just ridiculous. So something a little bit lighter, but still with a nice long story, sounds like a good thing. So maybe I'll add this on my PC maybe and I then did. never play it like I do <laughs> anything could. on PC. It's great. <laughs> now, and I'll just to end it before we move on. Was say The thing that also caught my eye about this was the summon part. Mm-hmm. Instead of getting a bunch of really cool characters and then you're struggling to put your party together because you really want to get this, this yeah, character yeah. in, but you actually need that character because you're going to be going up against said bad guy who's going to be immune to him. And, and then all of a sudden you're juggling levels, you're grinding because mm-hmm. you got to try to keep everybody up where you want them. This one doesn't go like that. It's just you get all these little summons, they come and go. They're, you know, they're, they're neat, but they're not like important. You know what I mean? They're not yeah. like, oh God, I really care about Grimwald, this random summon that I got earlier. Nope. Use them as needed. Oh, look at this one. This one's even cooler. Sweet. Moving on. That's what I need for the fight. Let's go. So I like that your only companions are the three that you always have. And then, of course, uh, main characters do come in throughout the whole system and then help you for their part of the adventure. And, of course, as you know, the the main hub, you pick where you're going, just like in all strategy RPGs. And it's like, oh, over here's this, over here's that. And you just click on what battle you want to go to. It'll show you all the stuff. Away you go. Easy peasy, man. Get it done. Cool. And what's easier than getting golden keys? Because we're, we're steering on into the gearbox segment of the show with shift codes for golden keys at Borderlands 2 and Borderlands 3. So you know what I'm going to say. It's my favorite part of the show. I'm getting excited. Hit up the Twitter, the Red the Forms, the Instagram. Hit up your preferred shift code provider. Get yourself some free loot. Yeah. Ooh, God. Look at the thing. Yeah, get yourself that free loot. I ain't done it in years. I ain't done it. I got <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember where the golden chests are in these games. Holy smokes. <laughs> oh, so terrible. It's so easy, Eric. Just put in the stick of keys and you get a million of them. Mm-hmm. It used to be my shtick. I used to have yeah. like a billion keys and never used them. That mm-hmm. was supposed to be me. Man, I have fallen. I've fallen from the skies and now I'm just a scrub in the woods like old Matt's always been. Now, I said I don't remember where the keys are, but that's a lie because the last time I played Borderlands 3, I ran up to the key the key chest and I went, today's the day. I'm definitely going to get legendaries because I've had great luck all this play session. And I opened it up and it went purple, 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 purple and I went, damn it. It just doesn't love you. No. Nope. That, that golden box has no love for you, man. Nope. There's nothing in there for you. Never going to be. You might as well just actually give your keys to me if you can because if you remember correctly... My whole thing was wiped, so I don't have keys anymore. I got zero <laughs> keys. I got no keys. I'm like, no keys, bandit. That's I could have them. That's how it should be. Now you are the reverse of me. By proportion, I have a million keys, and you have no keys. No keys. I, you know, and we even have an individual who goes into Discord, Sean for us, and throws the damn things in there. Yeah. I was like, and my Discord's always up. All I got to do is click a button. Uh huh. I could have them. Oh. That's all you got to do. Terrible. 
I'm a terrible human. You're looking at Don't Discord be terrible on, like me. You're looking at Discord on your phone or on right your computer, now. which also has mm-hmm. internet. It's like, boop, 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 two clicks away. There it is. God bless. So don't be like us. Get your dang keys and use them and get legendaries because only Matt's going to be, you know, in the, in the boat of no legendaries forever. So the rest yeah, of true. you will get awesome loot and have a good time with it. And speaking of awesome loot you can have a good time with, this is a reminder that now the limited time event that we talked to you about last week, now it's live. The Echo Cast Overload, where your Echo Cast rare chest loot chances of getting that all out of stuff while you're watching people and using your Echo Cast extension. Now it's live. It's live right now, as of the 30th, running through the 6th of August. Go get it. Go watch all your favorite streamers on Twitch. We don't have favorite streamers on Twitch other than ourselves, but watch us maybe if we play Borderlands and we went and hooked it up. We're going to do it. We'll do it. Maybe we, won't right. do it. We, got, we won't do it. We got to get there someday. We maybe will. Who knows? But. Either way, regardless, go watch your favorite folks. They will get loot for sure. They know where all the boxes are at. You know, they're just going to pop in there. Wham, bam, 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 bam. Everyone's going to get all the legendaries. It's going to be a great time. And of course, people this last week were having a great time, Matt, and we missed out because apparently, <laughs> remember last week when we told you they were putting legendaries in the vending machines, making uh-huh. it so it was more of a thing? They did that. But the numbers weren't quite right, and apparently legendaries were everywhere in the vending machines. It was legendary palooza. You could got everything you could ever dream of this last week if you were playing, rocking out, and getting those stinking vending machines. They nerfed it, folks. It's gone now. Now, see, if they had more than one flak adjustment that I cared about, I would have been playing over this past weekend. Except that's a lie because you were not around this. Wait, no, we were both around this weekend. We just never played together. Damn it. But yeah, remember <laughs> watching the basketball anime you talked about at the top of the show? Huh? I don't regret it. it. I don't voted. regret it. But the one thing I do regret is not getting in there and going up to a vending machine and seeing sparkling legendaries. Because we've been talking about it forever. I would love to look at a vending machine and be happy again. I could have done it this past week. Now I can't do it anymore because I guarantee it's going to roll 0% of the time for me. <sighs> but I guess stuff has to be balanced. You can't just get legendaries all the time. I get it. Well, that's true. And then what's the point of playing if you can just run up to the uh, vending machines and get all your legendaries and then mm-hmm. bada bing bada boom. So it's been nerfed. It's in theory back where it should be. We'll see. Obviously, everyone will let us know over the week. And then, of course, one more thing I wanted to mention in the uh, little patch notes was that they, again, I, th- I could have swore I said this last week, but I might be crazy. They increased the amount of loot dropped from the Proving Grounds in uh, the bo- from the bosses in the Mayhem modes. Was that something last week or something like that? Because I'm like, I could have swore I said something like that last week. I feel like it was something they at least talked about like two weeks ago. Maybe they've upped it even more since then. I don't think it was last week, but I, I do remember... Increased drops from the bosses in the Proving Grounds, yeah. Yeah. We said it before. I guess they've done it again. I mean, get on in there. It must be great now, right? Double buffs? There's got to be tons of legendaries. I mean, (laughs) They took all the legendaries out of the vending machine and gave them those (laughs) bosses. Those bosses bosses went shopping. (laughs) They went to the stores last week, man. (laughs) Beasts got to be shopping, got to be shopping. Isn't that that what somebody used to say in a comedy thing? Maybe. I don't remember that I don't one. Know. But yeah, I don't 100%, dude. Either. Yeah, you know, well, whatever. I'm an old man. <laughs> <laughs> Something. Speaking of old men, man, there's this old man in uh, this game. This little game called Godfall. Isn't there? I don't he's know. He's like old and he falls down and then he's like, get up, old man. You know, and it's like, oh, and he helps him up. But he's like, oh, we got to get to the top of this tower, huh? Possibly. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> It's, it's the first trailer for Godfall. Uh, I must, I must the, have missed the, the old guy man in the lion suit got, was running. Yeah, I got excited about the, the people and the tower and the things. I don't remember <laughs> old men. I don't. I don't look at old people on the street. I'm not going to remember them in a video game. Oh goodness! So yes, there is an old man apparently, or or maybe there is it, and they just called him an old man because he's just being mean or facetious, you know. But either way. Godfall, folks. We told you last week there was a lot of stuff going on, mm-hmm. lots of cool information coming out with it, and uh, we would we wanted to talk about it some then, but we figured, hey, you know what? We had a whole bunch of crap last week. Save it for this week. Have a little conversation back and forth about it, and, uh, and then, of course, wrap it up. Mm-hmm. So to begin with, Matt, overall, did you end up watching those videos, reading all the stuff, getting up to date, seeing all the crap going on that's been discussed thus far in Godfall? Oh, yeah. I definitely did. I was the one who... Read the GameSpot article last time. Now I got a chance to watch the video, which 
not only was it good to see, and it was it was repeated clips. Not only was it good to get kind of feel it more in action as the two were talking about it, but the guy who Eric's interviewed, I should have written his name down. I saw it come up on the screen. I went, I need to write that down, or I'm going to forget his name. And I went, Ah, oh well, <laughs> the guy from Godfall's Zone. These Eric's looking it up right now, but the guy who was talking to him, he was very. He he was the perfect pick for an interview like this because he was excited about the game. He was excited for Eric's Eric's being excited about the game, his reaction to it. He loved it. They played off of each other really well, I thought. And I really liked the way that Eric's put the interview together. Like he had, you could tell it was kind of a staged questions thing, but when stuff would come up, he'd like, whoosh, it would wipe to a new title with the details of the question. And then here's their response and they're back and forth about it. It was really well put together and it was great to see and hear, hear a little bit more than you heard in the article, but then also see it kind of in action as it was running. It was a good time. It was. I loved that interview myself for all the reasons you've already just stated. It was Richard Hang, the technical producer. And if I'm mispronouncing the last name, sorry. If you don't know, Richard, I don't pronounce anything right. So don't feel bad. It's never going to work. (laughs) I think it's a bit. Just don't add him. It's a bit. He's taken it into his real life, too. It's just a a full-time bit. It's and. You know, and I've done that a lot in life, you know. A lot of bits, they just become part of the reality. I don't mm-hmm. know. It's just something's wrong with me. Don't know what to tell you. But what I can tell you is I enjoyed that. I enjoyed, of course, the, the big interview with Keith Lee. And then if you did watch, I don't know if you watched any of the others, but he did a, a breakdown of, like, the weapon types. Yep, that's all I, I talked about the the, the, suppl- uh, the 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 Valor plates, the ones known currently, et cetera. Okay. And... And I kind of wanted to touch on the Valor Plate weapon combo to start because it's really cool but strange how they're doing this. You know, your typical looting game, which they said they were making sure you understand this is a looting type game, has, as, as stated in the interview, you know, the headpiece, the shoulders, the chest, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Instead, in this one, you get decked out in a, in a plate mail called Valor Plate. And you get that by doing activities in the game and then you come back to the hub. And then you're like, oh, I want that. I want that Valor set. Mm-hmm. And I didn't really it, the way it was explained and talked about because each Valor plate has its own unique Archon abilities yep. and stats and uh, passive traits, etc. That go with it. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like your your basic build. Each Valor plate's like, hey, this is my. This is what my build is. This is what my class is, or whatever you want to call it. I was going to say it's your class or your archetype that you're going to play as. Yes. And then from there, the weapons, depending on the weapon type you choose, and then of course your, uh, what do they call them? The little slots, the uh, augments. Yeah, Yeah, the augments and all that kind of will break it all down into a a subclass and get you all decked out. Mm -hmm. And that's strange for me because he didn't really specify when you're picking your valor plate out. Like, does it show you what it's, what it is, what kind of class it is? Or are you just going, wow, the lion looks really cool. I guess that'll be the first one I get. Oh, surprise. It's a crit build kind of valor plate set. You know what I mean? I have to assume because since you're actively going and unlocking it, it has to tell you just like when you're buying armor at the store or any, in any other game, like it's going to show you it has to. They didn't specifically say it, but. It has to be that way because if you want to go tank and you're just like, I don't know, I'm going to buy the big one and that's like a healer build or whatever, there's there's no way they would make you do that. It's not, it's not, it's not a chance. And I thought the same thing, but in the interview, he kind of also stated, he says, you know, we did want to make it so you can have like a build. So there, you can be like a tanky guy. You can be like a monkey type. But we also had to consider that we needed each class to be soloable. So we needed everyone to be able to go in there and kick butt, do lots of damage, take names. So then I was like, well, maybe they maybe they don't need to tell you because they're building each Valor Plate setup as its own soloable thing. So no matter what one you pick, you're going to do damage. You're going to be able to smoke through baddies. You're, but every video game, like you said, always goes, hey, ah, oh, we this this Valor Plate or this piece of armor is strong in this and this and this and this and this and this and this. And then you're like, wow, that's totally what I want to be. Yip, skippity, do, And then you can pick it out. 
you would never start up like Knights of the Old Republic and have it be like, do you want to be a soldier, a scoundrel, or a whatever the other one was, a spacer, and then not tell you any stats or give you any rundown of what those are. So it has to, hmm. it has to do it. You know what's going to do it. Has it. To. You're just being a contrarian Jones. That's what you're doing. Hey, you know, you know, I'm just saying it wasn't specified, so you know, you, I can't assume. Well, they didn't everything. specify Every that you got to hit buttons when you play the game that's either. Well, Maybe it's know, all motion very control. True. Maybe it's your VR, eyeballs. You know? <laughs> And the other thing with the Valor plate that kind of had me wondering was he said that most of it is unlocked through you, your choice. You know, you get the points, you unlock it, and away you go. He, he did say, and he kind of was hemming and hawing a little bit, but he, he did state that there are a couple that are unlocked through the story, sort of. Mm-hmm. And, and I didn't know how to feel about that because I'm like, well, since these are your builds, these are classes or whatever you want to call them, it, it, it seems like you'd want to be able to pick them all. So I'm wondering if these two, the two, because he said two, are they like some kind of like secondary build? You know what I mean? Like the, everything's going to be covered in all the, the Valor plates. And then these two will just be some kind of like special side builds or the same build as a different one, but just look way different and maybe act like minutely different. Because that would suck to be like, say I wanted to be a monk, for example, like I already mentioned. But nope, the monk's the one that's locked behind the very last boss of the game. And it's like, well, that sucks. I got to play as something else until the very end of the game, and then I can be a monk. I don't think it's going to be that. I think these are going to be either side builds or specialties or hybrids. Because obviously, Uh if you're tying two Valor plates to game progression, that's going to be mid-boss and end-boss. So they're going to have cool abilities that you don't have. They're going to be able to move fast or you know, shirk off damage or auto res or something cool that is not like a key, you know, a key class that you need, like a a range, you know, a spell caster, a tank or a healer, but they're going to have some cool ability that you're going to see throughout the game as you fight them, you know, and however many times you fight them until you beat them and then you get the valor plate. So I don't don't think it's going to be anything like anything you would miss out on. Otherwise it's going to be some kind of hybrid or some kind of really cool ability that putting this on, Heck yeah, I'm going to do that thing that I saw those bad dudes doing, and I'm going to wreck shop in these next two levels. I think that's what you're going to see out of that. I mostly agree with that. And then, of course, on the Archon abilities themselves, what would you think of that idea? That each Valor plate has like a unique super tied to it, so you, you gain the bar by attacking, get the you know pop the super, and away you go. You're flying across the screen, you're glowing, you're doing all sorts of really cool abilities. Is that, you know, has that got your interest peaked? Of course it's got my interest peaked. I love doing awesome things and doing things cool. I like, I mean, the combat itself looks good, but if you can charge up something that makes you feel even cooler or get some kind of ultimate attack or do something cool, that definitely always sparks your interest. And I mean, obviously it's a big hit. It's in League of Legends in every single game that's ever come out ever since then. But then also what I liked is in that interview, they were talking about how it's not just this ability, but your passive ability also ramps up for the duration of your Archon time mm-hmm. or Archon mode is what they said. So you fill up a bar, activate it, you uh, you do your ultimate ability, but then it's like it slowly starts draining while you're like we talked about the crit build. They specifically talked about it here where if your crit build is you get 10 percent crit chance, then in your Archon mode, it dr- jumps up to like 40 percent crit chance. And then that your crit damage stacks based on the amount of of uh enemies you kill while you're in that mode i like the duality of it i like you don't just get one big ability boom big aoe and then that's it it's boom big aoe and then i'm shirking off damage or i'm putting out shockwaves with my basic attacks whatever it happens to be what about you eric you hit it right in the nail i liked it because it lasts you know in destiny for example when you hit your super it's just one thing you go Brow, you know, for the most part. A couple yeah. of different classes have, like, the lightning, and then you go buzzing around for a couple seconds, which, guess what? That's what I end up picking because it lasts. I love how it's going to be something you go in, a mode you go into, and you get to start wrecking shop, taking names, doing whatever it is the ability is going to be there for. And then on top of it, you get your passive. And the way it was talked about with these augments and stuff, you're going to be able to build yourself up to where these augments are actually helping with this, the Archon mode and, of mm-hmm. course, your class in general. So it also made me wonder, I'm like, well, 
you're already going to have a cool, unique Archon mode available different than the Valor sets. And then are there going to be augments, etc., that you can then attach to it to change the Archon up a little bit and make it even different to differentiate yourself from somebody else? So, like, for example, say you have a lightning strike, then whenever you hit, it just does, like, massive lightning damage. Well, guess what? Put this augment on, then this is, of course... The typical one, chain lightnings. Now you're all of a sudden, you're chain lightning out, or it focus strikes maybe, and then sends out a second bolt to a nearby enemy and does the same, double the damage or something like that. You know, see where I'm going? Then you get to build, 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 and now you're looking super cool, super unique. And the best part about it, it reminds me a lot of Diablo in the way that you can build a character. So, like you, you don't like farming. You're not a big farmer. Right. You're like, I don't want to do all this crazy farm. I don't really care. I just want to get something that's good. But if you knew that you could get your lightning build and you could get your forked lightning augment and then you could get your whatever, you know, pole arm that augments that and does double the amount of lightning damage, I think you'd be way more inclined to actually farm so you could get your crazy cool lightning death build and be the god of thunder and then quit playing instead of just going yeah i beat the game cool man this is fun stuff whatever click and then you're done you know what i mean now i do agree with you i, I don't appreciate you saying that i just beat the game and i never <laughs> play games again but i agree in that because it would change the way that things look and feel you know, I don't like farming a lot in Borderlands because I shoot guns and then I just shoot, I just do more damage yeah, well, shooting that's what the I was same meaning. gun. But yeah, when you change the way it looks and the way it feels in combat, that'd be something I would really hope that they would do. And I think if you're designing something like these cool Archon abilities, this Archon mode, it's got to be something they've thought about. Or, you know, maybe like you get the, the like, like you said, the pole arm of the Thunder God and that synergizes with this. Whereas it's really cool on its own, but if you also get the Valor Plate that has the Archon ability that does this, then they kind of like mm, mesh together and make a little mm, a little chef's kiss. It kind of rides back up to what I was saying at the top of the episode with Ghost of Shushima, in that you can just, you get to build, 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 and you make yourself this cool character, this cool thing you want to be, and then... Like right now, I, I do want to do nothing but show them off. I'm like, I should take a picture and show it on Twitter. And I'm like, no, nobody cared about your last one. Don't do it. It's done. <laughs> you care. That's it. That's all that matters. Uh-huh. And then, so I don't do it. But even so, I'm proud of it. I want to show it. It's mm-hmm. fun. It's unique. And I think this is a good way Godfall could do that same thing is have it so by getting this certain the weapon, getting that certain ability, obviously for you, I could be like, Matt, you got to check out what I put together, you know. Mm-hmm. And then you'd come into the game with me, which, by the way, everybody, if you didn't know, it's all about co-op, three people co-op, get my boy Matt in there. And that and was the, that's the thing I'm most excited about, because Godfall looks cool, but if it was just a single-player game, I would play it that exact same way. Unless it mm-hmm. hit those Dynasty Warriors vibes for me, where I had to get everybody's ultimate stuff, I would play through it, and I would beat it, and I'd run through it again with a different Valor plate and different weapon type, and I'd go, all right, cool, I think we did it. But now that's co-op. It's drunk at Godfall night. Anytime you get down, man, you got to take a sip. Anytime you get knocked off the edge in this one, anytime he hits you with lightning, you got to take a sip. Which, of course, leads me perfectly into the whole questing structure and what they intend for this game. They said it's not going to be a games as a service, no mm-hmm. microtransactions, none of that kind of stuff going on. But they want to make it so it's highly replayable and that you're going to constantly be on doing stuff with your friends. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking to myself, that, that means it's games as a service. That's what this means. And so... But then they start talking more. I'm like, well, no, I guess I guess they're right because their idea here is that there's a there is a story. You're going up this tower. You're going to take out the old god, the mad god, knock him out of there, replace him because he's gone bananas. To do that, you're going through these different ele- elemental planes, etc. Climb it up, climb it up. Every level's got a mid boss and a boss. Y'all know the rigmarole here. And and I got to jump in since we're talking about levels. I hadn't seen most of these areas until I saw that Eric's interview. Uh, the environments are freaking gorgeous in this game. Gorgeous. Like I was, I thought Ghost of Tsushima looked good, and now I saw this and I was like, "Damn, I want, I want to have like towns in this area. I want to walk around in my badass suit and have villagers go, oh, Mr. Godfall, here you are. Oh, hey, hey, Hinterclaw, what's up? Hey, cool man. Obviously, we saw video of it and we knew it looked good, but I feel like these video clips are ones I hadn't seen before, especially of like mm-hmm. just you walking through the areas. Freaking gorgeous. Yeah. I- 
I want to say maybe we've seen some of the areas, but it was all just in the big jumble of flashes and things. I, yeah, I love yeah. the way Eric's put it together mm-hmm. and just showed you, look at this a different environment, look at this different environment, yeah. and really went, oh, wow, yeah, there is a huge range of, of feel and look to this game. Mm-hmm. And I was totally impressed as well. So you're climbing through those, you do all those, you do your mid-bosses and bosses, which get you know loot and cool stuff. Mm-hmm. And then he said, and this is where I was like, whoa. He went, you're going to beat the game, but don't worry. Because after you beat the game, now you got hunts. Mm-hmm. So not only can you go replay the levels, obviously the bosses have probably certain loot they can drop and things you're going to want to chase after. But regular baddies also have a chance. And then you get the hunts, which, hey, guess what? Like you said, Matt, get on. It's time to drink some beers. And then we, we get a whole bunch of hunts. And then you go find. You got to go to these different elemental planes and find the baddie that you're looking for. And they said, here's where it's cool, because in the story, you'll go on a path. They're going to tell you where to go. You're going to follow the path, and you'll see some cool stuff. But we made these environments open and big and large, so that way you're going to be able to explore and see all sorts of cool new things post-game that you would have missed pre-game, unless you're just a lunatic and decide to divert from everywhere and just go off on your own. That's me. Probably Matt. That. Yeah, I exactly. <laughs> so... You know, for Matt, he might see a lot of it before it ends. But for most people, they're going to charge through, get to the end of the game, and then come back and experience all the cool new stuff post-game with the hunts. And that was where I went, okay, I see what you're trying to do here. And then on top of it, and this is where I'm only confused, is they don't want to do games as a service, but I'm like, well, you could do games as a service light. Like, have events, you know, like every week or two. Be like, hey, you know what, we've got uh, a rare boss that we're spawning somewhere and you know this place and you gotta if you can hunt him down he's got a 50 you know, chance to drop something or rather mm-hmm. you know what i mean nothing like crazy but just cool little events to tie in to keep things fresh beyond you and your buddies just doing your general hunts etc and i think games as a service is getting kind of yeah lo- it's lost getting in translation and, yeah because mm-hmm. because here in this interview they said the exact same thing that Randy Pitchford said about Borderlands 3. Oh, of course it's not games as a service. There's no microtransactions. That doesn't mean there's no DLC. It doesn't mean there's no, you know, there's no weekly events. Weekly no activities this, this, or events. There's no interaction. But I feel like people have now turned, you know, they've turned against games as a service like they did loot boxes like two years ago. It's games as a service. Mm-hmm. Poo, they're just trying to rip me off. Don't want it. Yeah, sell me a bunch of crap over and over. Yeah. So I, I feel like that's – they have to do stuff like that. You could expand this world and this lore. We Obviously, we don't know what it is. But if you're fighting gods and taking them down, oh, well, there's yeah, there's, a, there's always more. There's, there's more gods somewhere. I mean, Smite, <laughs> Smite still exists right now for a reason because they're always pulling gods out of their pockets. Whoop, 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 look at this. And, you know, they talked about when they showed off the Hinterclaw Valor Plate, they talked about, oh, it's kind of like Norse looking because you got like the wolf head and all that stuff. You can make it, oh, man, now this has like an Egyptian kind of theme from this new DLC where you're going against the Egyptian, you know, gods or, or whatever they call them in there. So I feel like this is perfect for games as a service done properly or done light or done friendly in a, in a friendly yeah, way. Yeah, and that's... And that's what's driving me nuts because it's like I don't think games as a service is a dirty word. It all depends on how you use it, and that's individuals and in, and in, in up to the publisher slash developers. I, I but I hate yeah like how it's big. Oh no 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 we're not going to be games as a service. Well, I want you to be. Mm-hmm. I just don't want you to be the heinous kind. That's all. I want you to be the one that's actually there updating, giving me DLCs, giving me fresh content to play with. I want all that stuff. I mean, even loot boxes aren't really a dirty word unless you make them be, you know, the bad loot boxes. There's loot boxes in Borderlands 3, like Randy Pitchford always says, everybody loves them because you don't have to spend actual real human money to open them. You just find them in the uh-huh. game and boop, the other, there they go. If you get free drops of loot boxes and you, and you can't buy them or you don't have to buy them, everybody loves them. You and I, we love Overwatch loot boxes because we just earn them exactly. and we open them and we go, hooray, and we never buy a what single was this? one. Neat. Exactly. And if you get it, cool. If you don't, oh, well, I didn't, you know, it's no, it's no skin off my, my bones. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So I don't know. I'm all about it. I hope that's what they meant. I hope you're right and mm-hmm. that it is going to have all that content. And they were just trying to stay away from the, the dirty microtransactions mm-hmm. and that kind of stuff because I'm super interested in playing and having a good time. And, you know, there's a bunch more to talk about. I do want to get on to the, the weapons themselves. Yes. They got they got the long swords, the great swords, the war hammers, the pole arms, and the dual blades. Mm-hmm. And we saw the shields, 
But apparently, from what Eric's is putting together, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying what he said because he's done more research than I have in this regard, it looks as though everyone's going to have a shield that's kind of like built into their arm or whatever, and you're going to utilize it no matter what weapon type you're using. And then you can throw it like Captain America style, as he said, and which looked really cool, by the way. You know, oh, yeah. and I'm like, yeah, maybe that's where they're trying to go for like the God of War thunk. Because if you play the new God of War, every time you throw that 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 freaking axe and you come, it's just it feels good, it feels right, it's a good time. Maybe the I feel like they're trying to get a little bit of that with the shield action going here. And then on top of it, I think they've got most things covered. I mean, they don't have a boat, which is curious to me, but. Beyond that, I think everything's covered. But if you're doing stuff like God of War or Devil May Cry, which were their two big combat inspirations, you don't do a lot of ranged combat in those games. Sure, Devil May no. Cry has the guns, but you use them to like float enemies or like finish off a combo once you've already gone in there with your sword. I feel like that would kind of like, obviously for co-op, it'd be great. I'd love to sit back while you're getting mauled and just shooting bows. And, oh, man, they're just running around, dude. Can't hit nothing. <laughs> But I feel like it would take away from what we've seen out of the Godfall combat. But I, yeah. at first, I was a little, I was a little iffy because when you said five, when they say only five weapon types, I get sad because I want all the weapon types. I want a million mm-hmm. weapon types. But at the same time, when I think about stuff I really like, like Dynasty Warriors, there's lots of spears, lots of swords, a couple bows, some axes, and like that's it. I mean, you can definitely do with five weapon types. Well, two things I really liked about that was. For stuff like the the dual blades, you think close range, you know, doing fast combos. But they also Eric's also showed parts where you can they're like on chains, so you can swing them mm-hmm. out and do AOE stuff. You can also thunk and harpoon people and pull them in with those with the dual blades. That I love that. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to be doing that. And then the other thing I liked was your your move set is has to do with your weapon classes and not your valor plate itself which I really love because if I want to be a healer or a tank or something, I don't want to have to be the big heavy hammer guy. I want to be able to do quick attacks or, you know, I want to be able to sneak around the enemy, you know, with my little stealth ability or whatever, and then hit him with a giant hammer. I like the juxtaposition of those things. I like finding something that's fun for me to do and then still be able to do my class-based abilities with whatever weapon I want. I think that's really cool. That is awesome. And they showed them, of course, switching to the different weapons as needed. I can totally appreciate that right now. Once again, playing Ghost of Shima, it's so nice to be able to just flip, 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 flip through mm-hmm. the stances. So, boom, shield enemies. Boom, I got the sh- you know this stance up, that stance up, etc. This gave me that same exact vibe. Mm-hmm. You know, you go into a room and all of a bunch of colossals. Okay, Warhammer's coming out. Let's do this, boys. Bam, bam, bam. Uh-oh, a bunch of harpies flying in. Well, dual blades dragging you out, flipping, 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 makes you think, keeps you on your toes. And I'm like, that's great. And, of course, then it gives you the other option because just because there's five weapon types, they're going to have all sorts of different kind of blades, etc. in those different categories, Mm -hmm. even though they said they didn't go crazy because they wanted to do quality over quantity in this game. And I can appreciate that. It's going to be nice when you know I want to go after the dual blades of Aranus or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And, and there's not like 50,000 different variants and things. That, and I don't know which one's the best. Unless I do a lot of research, it'll just be, nope, let's hunt this guy down and get this drop. And that's the other thing that I loved with them talking about the loot system is that it's not all just random loot. Some people are going to have... I I would even say more than dedicated drops. Like they talked about going after this guy to get his thing, but then you also can get random cool drops from just the generic enemies out there. So you do have that excitement of, oh, I just killed this, you know, the 40th dude in this giant wave. Ping! Oh, he dropped some cool legendary. But I'm also going to go to the boss because I know he drops, you know, war hammers or whatever it is. You know, I like the idea of specific drops and also random drops. I just hope they can they can get that feel in there really good because that's the kind of stuff I like. If I just, you know, if I'm farming a boss and he's just dropping freaking random anything, that's no fun for me. That's that's why I don't like farming. But if I know mm-hmm. this is the guy, he drops his sword or he drops all swords of that type, at least I've got a chance at what I want to get. Exactly. I agree wholeheartedly, 100%. That's what's got me stoked about that. And to clean up my little point that I was going towards there was that each weapon, apparently, is going to have its own unique abil- uh, moves, etc. So you're going to have unique abilities with these weapons to help build your character. So you're going to want to have 
several different weapons in your arsenal ready to go with said unique abilities that fit whatever the hell you're trying to do with your valor plates, your augments, everything else. It all ties in to have the potential, from what I'm hearing anyway, because I haven't played it or seen it really myself, right. Okay, to just make it so you can make your character extremely cool, extremely unique, to fit your play style perfectly, which... It's so weird to me because I thought the minute I heard it was just, hey, you put on a Valor Plate and that's all, that's all your armor. There you go. Right. I went, uh, so you're just going to be a cookie cutter general build and there's 12 builds and that's the game? I'm not really sure how that's going to play out real well. Yeah. I mean, I was honestly a little worried about it, but the more I'm hearing, I'm like, well, maybe that's not the case. This is sounding a lot better. I'm liking this. <laughs> I had that same thought and then that same thank you Jesus kind of moment. I was just like, well, mm-hmm. I don't want to just be, well, here's the, here's the guy with the sword. And then I go through and okay, I don't really want to play with the hammer or the spear or, you know, try these other tw- other one of only 12 builds. So I, yeah, I'm definitely glad that it sounds like they're going to, they're going to make all kinds of things, all kinds of different ways. So you can make things all kinds of different ways for yourself. I like it. It sounds great. Yes. So I think that covers most points that were discussed and talked about throughout the, uh, the different little interviews and breakdowns. And I, I feel good about it. I don't know. Is there anything else that we've missed that you got? There's one thing that we, oh, there was right. no way for us to get to it, but they talked about, you know, you're building your, your valor plates, your weapons, your augments. But we haven't mentioned that you also, apparently, according to that GameSpot article, you have an overall character level and a skill tree that's not tied to the valor plates at all. So you have your own overarching skill tree that you can go in and and tweak your way up and down. And it's, I mean, obviously, it's just a further way to customize your character and your mm-hmm. play style. But to to have that on top of everything else. So you really like this valor plate and this augment and this weapon that goes with it, but then you can also go up into your skill tree up above up above all of that and customize yourself in another cool way too. They did that in League of Legends too. You have your League of Legends like your your summoner abilities and and traits and stuff that enhance your characters which you buy the gear for and upgrade the abilities for. It 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 mirrors that perfectly, and I love that system. So I'm gonna love this system too. Yeah, I'm totally digging that. Totally forgot all about that. Yes, mm-hmm. God, it's even more. It, it's panning out pretty nice. I, I gotta say, I was all interested from the word go because, as I said before, anytime you mention looting kind of game, I'm I, I'm at least looking your way. Mm-hmm. But after all this, now I'm watching it for realsies and ready to rock and roll. So I can't wait to see what happens and what they come out with and what they're showing us as, you know, it gets closer to launch. I'm sure we're going to see a couple more big trailers and gameplay shows, oh, yeah. videos as PlayStation holds its next big state of play or whatever later in the month of August from all rumors and reports. Uh, we'll probably catch it there. And if, and if we don't, we'll catch it for sure, September or October. Before the game launches, we're going to get a whole bunch more. And, of course, we'll keep you covered because I'm interested, Matt's interested, and you know we'll be keeping our eyes peeled. Absolutely, and will you guys out there be keeping your eyes peeled? Let us know what you're looking forward to in Godfall, or any other kind of thing at all. Send us questions, comments, concerns, any kind of feedback to the email, thirdshiftme at gmail.com, to the Twitter, at thirdshiftme, to the Facebook, find us on Third Shift. Those are the three places. Find us there. It's great. Find us there. You can also find us over on Patreon. We treat it just like a little old tip jar. You like what we're doing, want to support us, consider heading over there, throwing a buck, two bucks, five bucks, maybe even that coveted $1 million, in which case we're going to open up the real food line, folks, the real one, and we're going to have aisles with babies in jars. We're going to have the unpatented but soon to be patent cold cocks products, and we're going to have cameras everywhere doing all sorts of zany things. It's going to be a good time. Change our lives so we can change yours. You know what I'm saying? Help us help you. Absolutely. <laughs> and the way you can help us the most is by listening to our next episode, which will be up by the 7th of August. And you can find that episode on iTunes, on Stitcher, on Podbean, on Spotify, and on YouTube. And as I always say, hey, if you like what we're doing and you'd like to help us out, please give us a like, a rating, a review, a comment, a subscription, any kind of good thing on any one of those good services, because it does help us out, and we really do appreciate it. We do appreciate it. And, of course, here's your classical, give us that five-star rating on iTunes. We need them. We got to keep growing. We got to keep eating. We're hungry little boys over here. Blah, 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 blah. Give us some of those five stars, folks, <laughs> or I'll come gobble you up instead. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, that, there's nothing else to say. No, don't, 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 don't forget to say. Oh, come on, man. <laughs>
Shut up and sit down.